Hi friends, this is Miss Kat, one of the STEM educators at Boys and Girls Club, and today I want to continue talking about how to tell time with moon phases. In my other video, we learned and figured out when the moon rises and sets based on its moon phase, and now we're going to put them in order. It looks much better. We start with the new moon at the top of at the same time as the sun and then work our way down until we get through all the phases that go around the earth. So let's do some practice. So this problem says if the moon is high in the sky right above us at 9 a.m. what moon phase should it be in? So we have two options of how we can solve this problem. Our first option of how we can solve this problem is that we could look at our moon chart and read the answer. Because if we look in the middle column where it tells us um, where the moon is highest in the sky at what time, we can see that the waning crescent is highest in the sky at 9 a.m. So that way is really easy if you have this chart, or you can do it the second way where we can use um, the diagram that the problem was shown on and our knowledge of where the moon is according to the sun to figure out which moon phase should be there. So let me walk you through it. So back to the diagram that was on our problem. So it says it's 9 a.m. And we know at 9 a.m. the sun is in between the eastern horizon and above, so between um, 6 a.m. and 12 p.m. This means that the moon that's currently here is three hours ahead because the sun is about to be highest in the sky at noon, which is three hours after 9. Since we know that the Earth orbits counterclockwise, we need to find the moon phase that's right before the new moon. The moon phase that will appear three hours before the sun will be the waning crescent. And you can see that the waning crescent in this diagram is at a 45 degree angle from Earth um, to the sun. So if I'm standing at the exact same spot and looking directly up in the sky, that means that the waning crescent moon will appear three hours before the sun. So looking back at our diagram, we can see that the waning crescent is going to be highest in the sky at 9 a.m. And this is what it should look like during the day at 9 a.m. You're probably thinking right now, Miss Cat, this is great and all, but I do not care about the moon during the day. What if I'm lost at night and have no watch to tell the time with? How can I figure out what time it is using the moon? So let's take this problem for example. We can clearly see the moon is highest in the sky, I'm looking directly above, and that the light is on the left side of the moon, which means it must be one of the waning phases. And because it's almost the full moon, but not quite, I can surely assume that it's a waning gibbous phase. The waning phase is in between the full moon and the third quarter moon, and when it's highest in the sky, the sun is not out. Because we know what order our moon phases are in, we can clearly see how many hours the waning gibbous is going to be ahead of the sun. So each of the moon phases rise and set um, three hours after each other, so we can um, add up between the moon phases that are in between the waning gibbous and the sun. So between the new moon and the waning crescent is three hours, plus another three hours between the waning crescent and the third quarter, and then plus another three hours between the third quarter and the waning gibbous, which gives us a total of nine hours ahead. So back to our problem diagram, we see that the waning gibbous is directly above us, and with the sun, the sun does this at noon. So nine hours before noon is 3 a.m. So when the waning gibbous is directly above you in the sky at night, it is 3 a.m. And checking in with our chart, we can see that we are correct. So our last example is what time is it when this moon phase is rising from the eastern horizon. First, we start off with what phase is this moon in? And we can tell because the light is on the left side of the moon that it is in one of the waning phases. And since it is split right down the middle, it is one of the quarter moons. So that means it must be the third quarter phase. So we see here that the third quarter phase is two moon phases behind the new moon and the new moon has the same times as the sun so because it has two 45 degree angles which means it is two sets of three hours um, ahead of the sun so it is six hours ahead and we know that the sun rises at 6 a.m in the eastern horizon so since the third quarter is six hours ahead of that that means that this moon is rising at midnight or 12 a.m so I hope you enjoyed our second video about how to tell time using different moon phases. Um, if you have any questions, you can look up resources online, but hopefully this gave you a lot of practice and I hope you join me next time.